All right, welcome to SV Seeker. That's Seeker back behind me. We're working in the engine room on this video. Just make something that, that way when you take this loose, it can support itself. How come this ain't rotating? No, that's what I want to know. That sucker's on there, dude. Yeah, look at that. There you go. This is Don Sachs, he's back with us and he's giving me a lesson in how far we've come in a year. Yeah, I'm just... So we were working on the on the hatches? Yes, bolting them down, cut, making the gaskets, cutting them around the edge, bolting all that stuff down. <laughs> yeah, we've come a long way. Yeah. I'm sure it's only been a year. Well, you feel like it's going that fast. No. This is A-what, A-what, Don? Hi. Don, nice to meet you. I'm A-what. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Yeah. Try 19 volts and see how many amp hours. Will I feel like yeah. I'm in a spa. It does. It it's has a, a nice spa, spa feeling to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we have a sauna in here when we fire up all the engines. You can pour uh, seawater over the manifolds of the engines. How's that? Yeah. That'll work. What is can it? You That's just flex in it's there. Press, it's press fit. Well, shoot. Let's shorten it up then and pull it back well, into the engine. Well, either that or you just come out with a pipe and go down. I didn't realize that was press fit. It, oh, the, okay. This this will expand and it'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, why not just a pipe out? Oh, because uh, we want the exhaust on it. So when we take the engine out, the exhaust is already on there. The muffler's on there. Yeah, but if it's hanging out here, is that a problem? Oh, no. No, no he's going to ride it down and around this edge and down. It's just as long as we have a crawl space back okay, through so, there. Okay, so... That's already planned out. So what do you think? Maybe... We just need to get it in off of this, this frame. Quarter here. inch off and... Yeah. Yeah, and then waddle these holes out. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, so. perfect. Uh, no problem. All right. Really happy we can make parts like that. Now somebody commented, do you need a $10,000 machine to make a $4 part? Well, first off, I looked them up. There are $45 on JEGS, so yeah, they're a little more than four, but it's a valid point. If you already know how to do CNC machining, you're not learning anything. If you always have somebody else readily available to make or a source to buy custom parts from, yeah, no, you don't. You know, you're know, you not gonna benefit anything from it, but if you're gonna learn something from it, uh, yeah, it's think of it like going to college. You're probably going to actually have a skill when you're done that you'll get uh, a return for your investment on your education. So if it's something you can learn, do it. You know, it's going to be a whole lot cheaper to buy a $10,000 machine than it is to go to college for a year. And when you get done with a year of working on this machine, you'll be good at it. I mean, really good at it. I've only play, played with it for a few days and I'm okay with it. So I, the learning curve's not that bad. It just takes an investment in time. And then the other thing is like, okay, even if you're just gonna make a $4 part, 300 miles east of Midway Island in the Pacific, that's not gonna be a $4 part. That's nice. Okay. Aren't you missing your veterans parade? No, it's your day, man. It's too cold. <laughs> I drove. Oh, I forgot your Air Force. Yeah, you're right. It's too cold. That's the gentleman's Air Force. <laughs> don't you forget it. <laughs> I drove my black shirt and purple in the parade. Did you? With a guy about this color, one of my best friends, and he and I did it four years ago. Yeah, yeah with the top down, it's cold, motherfucker. <laughs> Yeah, fudge it just a little bit. Yeah, he didn't like that first weld so much that he's putting a cover pass over it. Just to be sure. Just to be sure. You know, it's not a nuclear facility, right? Your life does depend on it, though. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's gorgeous. Damn, you got it all done today. It's just tacked up. You see, pull it out and weld it. Well, oh, I know, it's just tacked up still. You need to clean that pipe out with The exhaust? 
that torch slide down there. Yeah, okay, I can vacuum that out. I'll find a reason for you to come. He is done with the second exhaust pipe going to the VMAC. You worried about something? Yeah. What were you worried about? I think we're going to have to move this back like we really talked about. Why? We'll just get that carburetor so close to that. Some jackass could have generated like. Yeah, that, that's got enough clearance there. You're worried about that? That's going to be hard. Well, so it burns the paint off. I don't care. We can make a shield for that. Mm. Yeah, let me see yeah it. we have a shield. We took it off. Right, I know. We can move it back in a little bit more, but you can't do it here. So we cut the floor grate down? Damn it, right about there. All right, if we need to do it, we can do it. But let's not rush into it until we fire this engine up and let it run for a while. We're just, just talking. And let's not do it today because, damn it, it's late in the day. I want to quit. Okay. Is cold. You volunteers you keep on wanting to do it today. Like, no, that's not. That is beautiful work, Dave. I appreciate it, man. I'm excited, but I will not start it until you're here. Now, we're having an intellectual discussion about the turbo, and actually, he's a turbo guy over there. He's, well, is an F 16 considered a turbo? It should be, right? <laughs> so, the thought is that when one of these smaller engines is running, the way it's built into the main exhaust, it may create a vacuum in the main exhaust, and if there was a valve open, an exhaust valve open on the main engine, the Cummins 5 down down below, it may draw some air through the exhaust. It might turn the turbo without any oil. And now, Dave, your, your take on it is it's not going to be spinning fast enough to make any hill of beans difference. His take on it is, wait a minute, that's Bart. His take on it. Bart, do you have an opinion on it? Uh, it doesn't matter. You don't think it matters? Well, you think it's going to well, turn it? No, it's not going to turn it. I do think it's going to turn It's not going to create enough vacuum or back pressure one way or the other. To even spin the thing. I don't think so either, because I, I think there's, you get gas past the turbo without it doing anything. I think you've got to have a lot of gas to make the thing It's going to have to take a lot. So it had to be a lot. No, I, I kind of agree with Bart. It might, it, it, would, it probably won't turn at all. And if it, and his opinion is, what's your opinion? Do you have an opinion? <laughs> I don't know enough about it. Oh, that he's going to just going to take the fifth. That's typical Air Force officers for you, and then it's like, <laughs> he wasn't an officer. What was you? Were you master? You were a sergeant? Master, master. Senior? Senior, senior master. master? Well, shit, you're more powerful than most officers, so what the hell? That's right. That's right. There's the thought. See, these two smaller engines go in at an angle, and we have them stubbed into the main pipe. Uh, the main line comes back up. Well, you can see it does a 180 degree turn there. That's the main line going through. So, I mean, leave your guess in the comments. We will not have a contest, but hey, you can, your ego can be kicked up a notch anyway. Have fun. 17 times up the ladder today? Yeah, it's good exercise. Ah, it hadn't gotten any warmer out here. Okay, flash forward two years. A lot of things have changed on the boat, and we're getting ready to do the insulation around the exhaust pipes. The diameter of the pipe is four and a half inches. And then we have a spell reducer. Okay, 90 to the flange. That's reducing down to two inch. So the guy at the thermal pipe insulation store here in Tulsa, you know, asked me if I had a CAD drawing. I said, no. Well, it turns out I'm going to have one. And for those of you that don't recognize him, that's Nick from Renegade Sailing. Check out his channel. The Renegade Show. Renegade Show? The Renegade Show. That's Dexter. How are you doing, Dex? Oh, you've been having fun, haven't you? Okay, so from that to that, much prettier. You ready to go outside? <laughs> Hell yes. Okay, if you don't know this, Seeker is going to be a free of charge research vessel once she's on the water. We're going to find students, teachers, professors, researchers, citizen scientists that have some passion for something they want to do out on the oceans, and we're going to give them a free ride. And we're going to sponsor their equipment and their fuel and other things they need if they can't afford it or haven't written a grant for it. We're going to sponsor that through the Sea Chess Foundation. That's a 501c3 nonprofit. And you can have a part of this boat. There's a couple of ways you can do that. One is physically, we need 18650s. Those are those little lithium ion batteries, the round ones that look kind of look like double A's. We need those and you have them in your old tools, your old skateboards, that sort of thing. If you have them, send them to the address in the description. Richard Day is going to tear all those things apart, test all the batteries. He's going to build us up a bank of batteries for this boat. We're going to have that and others as well. A lot of power storage because we're going to take solar energy and fill those up and then we can run our machinery on the boat 
out of battery. Now, if you were paying attention to that video from two years ago, AWOT was putting Edison batteries, nickel iron batteries, into the floor of this hole. And unfortunately, they did not give us but about 1.3 kilowatt hours. So these storage compartments underneath this floor are still empty. We do not have any batteries. Hey, Richard Day is helping us correct that as well as Matthew. He's a battery guy and he's working on getting us a forklift battery. So hopefully we'll have something to go in there. We just need your help. If you have some laying around or if you go down to Home Depot or Lowe's and ask them for some of them that have been turned in, you can send us those batteries. Don't go out and buy them off the internet or eBay because they're probably selling batteries that you, we really don't want and you don't need to give money for it. That's, we just want something that you have that you're getting ready to, you know, to take in to Home Depot to turn in or something like that. Send them to us. If you have like five or six, it's worth the box that you're going to put them in and send them down to us. If you have two or three batteries, just hang on to them. Find somebody that has a little project or donate them, give them to somebody else. Find some more batteries, but you got to get us, you know, a bunch of them. And we're about, uh, we've got about like 1,300 of them already, but we'll take about three to 4,000 if we can get them. Because we're going to get the very best of what tests out. Here's a bit of a video that explains that. We're going to be taking those, making a series of SV Seeker keychains, and we'll have them available in a couple ways. We're going to go over that. And last minute, we did decide to make the boat into a bottle opener as well. You got a little key ring hole there for your keychain. Perfect. One way to get one of these keychains for free is just send us a box of old batteries, tool batteries, laptop batteries. But just to clarify what we need, you guys. We need old laptop batteries like this. They're gonna have cells inside. They're thicker. Newer ones that are thin, no bueno. Take all the housing apart, you're gonna get cells just like this. That's what Doug needs for the boat. Same thing is going inside of tool batteries. You just need to see that they have this lithium ion on there somewhere. If it says nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride, NIMH, they're not the kind that Doug needs. I've got a system where we'll break them down, test them, the best of the best will go on the boat so you can get the most density out of it. And in return, as a thanks, we'll send you one of these keychains. Make sure you put something in there with your address, whatever on it, and uh, you'll, you'll get a keychain. If you're not interested in trading some batteries for a keychain, Doug will tell you how you can actually get one. What's the website? Oh, I don't remember your website, Richard. I'm sorry, man. What is it again? Weldityourselfkits.com. Weldityourselfkits.com. So you can go to Richard's website, yeah. weldityourselfkits.com. That once again is weldityourselfkits.com. We're also going to be taking a large section of the steel from the hull that was removed to make the uh, folds for the origami and Doug's been holding on to forever. And we are going to make a larger cutout of the boat in profile with its full sails up. I'm gonna have Doug sign them. We'll ship them to you. They're gonna be a limited run. When they're gone, they're gone, and we'll never do them again. So if you followed the project for a long time, you want a piece of the boat literally on your wall, go ahead, pick one up. 100% of the money from those is going to go to Sea Chest Foundation and 100% of the profits from the keychains is also gonna to go to the Sea Chest Foundation to support the work of the boat once it's on the water. Okay, a lot of people think Oklahoma's a strange place to build a boat, but we have a couple of advantages. In Tulsa here, we are connected to the Tulsa Port of Catoosa that connects us to the oceans of the world. And we have a fantastic fabrication industry here Across the river is Holly Frontier Refinery, and so there's lots of businesses surrounding that. And we're an oil center, so insulating pipe is something we do here all the time. And I have a couple of guys out, James and David, from Tulsa Insulation Specialist here today. They're going to be installing insulation wrap over the exhaust system on the engine. Something you, it's expensive to do, but when you have it, you know, available to you locally, price is really good. So this is uh, James and uh, that's David. Yes, you see him down in there. Way for us. There, there, there's his hand. You can see his hand down there. But they decided to start with the hard spot first. That's the main line going across and then it goes up the wall over there. Nick Richards actually measured it all and did a CAD drawing of it all. So James took those images back with him and then it's all sewn up at their shop. So depending on what you need, they add on various layers. So this is one of the cooler wraps. This one here has some metal. Um, what is that? Aluminum? It's a stainless foil. Really? Stainless steel foil. That's cool. And yeah, that's uh, to go over one of the hotter spots. And look, notch to go around every piece of pipe. These are stainless steel 
staples? Yep, stainless and then silicone. That's a silicone coated fiberglass cloth. Um, usually this is about 600. 600. They are uh, wiring it together. It's just laced. Just like lacing your shoes, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Which makes it real easy to take it apart and do an inspection later on. Check that out. It is all installed. Oh, you even left the sewing out for me. Appreciate that. Well, it'd be easier to well yeah, it's easy to reach and it looks cool. Beautiful job, guys. Even the uh, collar where the flange was is just gorgeous. So what do you think, David? You prefer boats over refineries? Uh, both. Both? You'll take both, huh? Well, you're welcome. It's a lot quieter here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Won't be long till we're ready to start that engine up. We move the boat to the Tulsa port of Catoosa on August 12th. We launch on August 21st. Make plans, come to Tulsa, join us. What'd you make today? wander. 